two. Here we go. It's time for another episode of Should Have Listened to My Mother, my weekly podcast, and I'm your host, Jackie Tantillo. Each week, we ponder the lasting effects, good or bad, that her mother had on us. My guests share their mom's strengths and weaknesses, their ability or inability to show love and affection. And I always ask the question, unless I forget, are you who you are today because of or in spite of your mother? In just a minute, I'm going to be speaking with Jean Walters, who is a best-selling author. She's a meditation coach. And as I'm talking, I'm going to start dialing. Uh, She's a personal growth consultant and more. So she's expecting our call. And I'd like her to share the story of her mom. Oh, hold on one sec, Jean. I got to push the button. Are you there? Hi, Jean. Hi. Hi, it's Jackie Tantillo. How are you? Welcome to Should Have Listened to My Mother. (laughs) Uh, That's a very interesting statement, by the way. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) So what is it right out of the gate that makes you say something like that? Well, there were many things. My mom was very wise in many ways, but also she was also very frightened and frenzied and anxious in many ways. So it's like, I think like me, like many other people have to decide which part of their mother they needed to listen to. (laughs) Yeah, it's a little bit of both sometimes. What is your mom's name or what was your mom's name? Helen, Helen Elizabeth Davenport. And what did she go by? Did you guys? Well, my dad called her Red, by the way. <laughs> but, you know, and I'm not sure exactly why that is. But anyway, uh, but Helen was. Yeah, you know, she went by her first name, Helen. Mm-hmm. And the red, red is in the color red. Yeah, I guess. That's so, term you know, of endearment. Hey, red. <laughs> well, that's hey, red, great. You know, and, yeah. So they had their own little nicknames for each other, which was kind of cute. Did you grow up in the Midwest? Yes, I did. Yes, I live in St. Louis, and uh, I grew up in St. Louis, and uh, it's a nice Midwestern city, you know. <laughs> I have family there, and they love it. Oh, do you? Do you uh-huh. have family here? Oh, mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, great city. Okay, so we have to go back to talking about your mom, and then we can go back talking about St. Louis. <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. That sounds good. I read a little bit of your book before you you picked up. I mentioned to my listeners the title of your most recent book, The Journey from Anxiety to Peace. And I have watched some of your meditation videos. If you just Google Gene Walters uh, Mm -hmm. on YouTube, you have a plethora of choices. So knowledgeable and insightful yeah. and and as i said oh. to you in previous in emails your uh your ma- your demeanor your mannerism you emote peace and calm which yes. is really really important especially knowing what i know now about your relationship with your mom and all that kind of stuff when you were growing yeah. up yeah so you mentioned in your book that she was very loving and yet she had some issues. Like, we all have issues, yeah, I mean, but she had some issues. She truly did. She, she was loving in that she always put her family first. And uh, she gave her 100%, you know. And uh, she took care of my, my grandmother. And, you know, she was the center of our family. I mean, she really was. And um, it was, she had a lot of wisdom. But she also had a lot of fragility and um, nervousness. And I... I think today, in today's age, she probably would have been diagnosed and put on some sort of medication, you know. But I, that wasn't there then, and and certainly, certainly, if it had been, it would have been popular. But of course, nowadays people are doing a lot of that, you know, almost randomly in a way. But uh, the, thing, the thing, when I look back on my mom, the thing I really appreciate about her is that um, she taught us responsibility. And you know, we had we had chores to do, and we were responsible for that. And it wasn't about you know nowadays you hear about kids like arguing about their chores. There may have been a teeny bit of that, but mostly we just knew what we had to do and we did it. And I and I honor her for that because I think it really helped me become the person that I am. You know that I realized early on that if I wanted something, I needed to go get it myself. 
And I don't mean that in any negative way at all, because I think it really taught me how to be strong and resourceful. And my mom was resourceful, too. So there was a lot of good that came out of her parenting. When you say we, you have siblings? Yes. I have, I have two sisters. One is a twin, and, and, and I have an older sister. So you're a twin. Who's older? You or your sister? I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always consider myself the middle child, you know, <laughs> because my, my twin sister always played it up that she was uh, the baby of the family. And she really liked it. I mean, she really liked that designation, and I would never have touched it with a 10-foot pole. (laughs) Hey, but that's great, because usually twins argue over, you know, who was older. So that's good. She's smart. She just went for the baby of the family. (laughs) Well, you know, some people might call it smart, but I think it was basically a big mistake on her part, because when she was going for the baby of the family, she you know, made some of it like a victimhood thing, you know, like, poor me, you know, I'm the baby of the family or something. So, yeah, and I I really, that's why I would not have touched it, because I just saw a lot of the way she did it as, as being more of a victim, you know, and I know there's a lot of people who play that role in life, but I, I discourage it, because it really... Um, keeps you from your power. It keeps you from being the powerful being that you're meant to be. You mentioned your story, and you're, I think you're talking in reference to your mom and your recent book about her anxiety and nervousness it, yeah. or, or other people that you've met with or worked with, clients. They make it their story, so that's their whole life. They put the yes. big banner out in front. Yes. Did your mom yes. do that? Um, or did she disguise it? Well, my mom it? always saw her, I, the, unfortunately, which, I, you know, was the way she kind of deluded herself. I, I think she always saw herself as less than, you know, and I don't think she really understood how powerful she really was, but she always saw herself as less than. And I, and I thought about it a lot, you know, growing up, like, what is it in her that makes her believe that she was less than? And and then, I, you know, there were a lot of things, like she was the only girl in her family. And I think at that time, girls were not as valuable. You know, a lot of that goes dates back to, you know, girls, women are not as valuable as men, et cetera. And, and she thought of herself, she was so sensitive, and she was really psychic, by the way. But she saw herself as so sensitive, and I think a lot of her nervousness came from that sensitivity because... I think she didn't know what to do with it. Wow. And was she intuitive? She was very. I mean, she, I mean, she was downright psychic. I think her fear was that it made her different, you know. Mm-hmm. And so then that just added more evidence to her that she's not, she's less than, or she's not as good as you know other people, or something like that. I, I'm putting words on feelings that I had that I observed with her. And uh, because I I saw her as being the force, you know, (laughs) in the family, but uh, she saw herself as less than. So, you know, that influenced a lot of of how she responded to things. But she she was really resourceful. I mean, when she decided she wanted to figure out a way to get us a prom dress or something, she figured it out and, and made it happen, you know. So I, I honor her for that. I thought, you know, she, those are ways that I saw her magnificence, you know. Um, but I don't think she calculated it that way. <laughs> what was her mother like, your grandmother, maternal grandmother? She, her mother lived with us, and uh, uh, she, was, she was also a, she was a hard, hardworking German woman, you know. And uh, she, she was there with us, you know, growing up. Um, she, the thing that was interesting about my grandmother is I, I, I could not find a picture of her that she ever smiled. And so it was kind of this, almost like this German sense of like, you know, you do your duty and you work and you get things done. And, um, and so then I, you die. Really, yeah, and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> there you go. That was my grandma. <laughs> wow. She was a good lady. I mean, you know, she was a good lady, but I I just never saw her as being happy, you know. Never doing the fancy two-step or anything. No, not at all. <laughs> so not at all. your mom 
uh, did you bring friends to your house? Or was it the kind of thing where you didn't want your friends to know what was going on? This was a secret? Oh, no. Or or your, you no, were... No, no. Your mom no, was not at all. I mean, okay. I definitely would bring friends to the house. I mean, but uh, but the thing is, I had a twin sister, so I had a company all the time. You know, it's we always uh, played games together, and we did like the equivalent of Barbie dolls then, and so you know. But we, we definitely brought friends to the house. It's just it wasn't so much a thing then it is now. You know, now it's like whose house are we going to play at today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they didn't do so much of that. If you needed a hug or a squeeze or some confidence building, was she able to do that? No. I mean, like I say, I was kind of, I was a German family. I really didn't discover hugs till later. And and uh, I really liked hugs. <laughs> hugs are good. But, um, but, you know, I still like hugs a lot. But, but we didn't do any hugs back then. We just didn't. And I don't think it was, you know, a lack of love or anything like that. I just think that they were just, you know, like a German family that just got things done and, you know, and you didn't think about hugs or <laughs> cuddling or things like that, you know. Yeah, it definitely changes things. But you you were very smart and you said that you kind of figured out how to counter your mom's anxiety or nervousness or negative thoughts. Yeah, yes. How old I, were honestly, you when you started? I, I tried, how old were oh, you? Yeah. Do you know? I was young when I decided that I was not living life the way my mom did. I mean, I was young. I remember, I don't can't tell you a year, but I was, you know, young, like five, six, seven, when I decided uh, I'm not doing it, not doing it. I'm going to figure out some other way to live life because I'm, there's got to be a better way than this. And I, and I, I don't want to sound like I didn't love my mom. I did love my mom. In fact, I, I just almost abused her trying to get her to change her mind, you know. <laughs> so, Mom, look at it this way. What about that? You know, if you think about it this way, it'll change literally, blah, 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 you know, and I was like, oh, my gosh. That was uh, that's a pretty heavy burden for a young child to take on that role. Well, you know the the thing that I appreciate about it, though, I never thought of it as a heavy burden. But the thing I appreciated about it is that I was so determined to find another way that no matter what she said, I would come back with a positive statement. So in a way, we were kind of at each other, you know. <laughs> but um, but I was so determined to find something good in everything that I, it really helped me through my life. Because to this day, no matter what anybody says, I can always find another way to look at things, you know. I was going to so, say, she helped yeah. you figure yeah. out who you are and what you're good at. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, by hook or crook, you know, but, but at the same time, I have to say this, I mean, because I don't want to down my mom, because she was a good lady, but the thing is, when she, when she was getting ready to die, she said to me one time when we were alone, and she said, you know, I have never understood you, but I really do respect you. And I thought, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> because I thought, you know, that's really all I ever wanted from her was respect. And because I knew she loved us all, you know, but um, but 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 that was interesting because she never got why I did the things I did, you know, why I was so dead set <laughs> on living a different life. But she did respect it. That's what more could you want, really? How old were you when she died? Oh, I was in mid thirties. I, you know, I don't remember. I mean, I don't remember at this age I did this or that age I did this. Right. But I was I, in, in my thirties, and my I, I had uh, kids that were, oh, you know, fairly young. Right. Yeah. But it would have been yeah. would it have been something nice to have heard when you were in your twenties? Oh, sure, sure. Right. So but, you could understand you know, people, your relationship better. Sure. I, people acting it out is much more important than people saying words, you know. And, I and you know, even though we were kind of at each other, I did back off after a while and decided that, you know, I really don't want anyone telling me how to live my life. And so I thought I had no right to tell her how she should live her life. So I'd, at some point I backed off and said, you know what, be the person you need to be. And I didn't say it in my words. I said it in the way I treated her. I just didn't interfere any longer. And I thought that was a, a good 
That was a good thing to do. That was a good thing to do. As they say. I didn't need to hassle her anymore, you know. All right. Well, <laughs> actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah, so you are very, exactly. very smart. And did your yes. sisters have, have the same understanding of what was going on, or they thought you were crazy? Yeah, your sisters. Oh. No, uh, they just they just saw me as sort of walking my own walk, you know. Um, they, you know, we were all trained in a certain way, you know, to the out, the goal of life is to be married and have children, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. And uh, so we were, we all kind of got early, married early and had the kids early. And then at some point I even woke up and thought, you know, there's really more to life. I mean, this is not the whole bag right here. There's, there's more to life than this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, as with everyone, really, we have to find our own way. I can't. Our parents can't do it for us. We really have to figure it out ourselves. Would you agree with that, or is that oh, right? absolutely? But sometimes okay. we don't know that we have that liberty. Yeah. You, or well, I, I agree with you. I think some people don't know that. Maybe that's one of the big values that you can offer with your podcast. You know that we do not only have a right to do it, but we have an obligation to do it to find our own way and. Uh, you know, not just be a clone of what we were raised with. Right. It's self-confidence, I guess, that it, like, oh, my gosh, I don't have to follow. And like you said, your mom said, get married early, have children, you know, that traditional route. But it isn't yeah. for every, we're not all cookie cut, cookie right. cut, right? And, to, and honestly, they never said it. It was just modeled all the time. Exactly. Know? Yeah. Life so, by example. Yeah, and even the TV shows, Leave It to Beaver and, you know, a, a Father Knows Best and the Waltons and all that. I mean, it was constantly being modeled, you know. Do you believe these next generations have changed? Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, it's not so much that I am woman, hear me roar, but it's it's more that they really take their education seriously. They they really think about what it is they want to do and, um, you know, how they can express themselves. So, I mean, honestly, we just never thought about it, you know, of expressing yourself. What is that? You know, you know there's, there's pluses and minuses to everything, you know, Jackie, and... Um, you know, I'm I'm pleased that I was raised in the generation I was. I think that because we didn't have a lot, it really helped me to realize that I am in charge of myself and I can figure it out and I can get it done. So, and I don't know if my grandkids have that same opportunity because they they're given a lot more than I had. You know, and I'm not this is not a complaint or anything because I really do see value. But anyway, you know. We need to get the mother we need. I think I really believe that we need to get the mother we need. Well, they say the children choose their parents. Do you believe in that? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's an energetic thing. Well, look at the gift she gave you. Look yeah. at what you've accomplished and how confident and giving, and you're helping so many people. I just want to remind my listeners that Jean Walters is my guest. And uh, she's the author of her most recent book, The Journey from Anxiety to Peace, Practical Steps to Handle Fear, Embrace Struggle, and Eliminate Worry to Become Happy and Free. And I think yeah. that is a, a vision that a lot more people want to have now, which I commend mm -hmm. you. How do you describe yourself? I don't know that I do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if I were, I guess I would just say I'm a, I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker after knowledge and and the light. You know, I want to understand our possibility and our potential, and uh, I want to share that with other people. So, I mean, that's who I am at the core of my being. You know, I'm curious. I don't want to know more, and uh, I want to share. So, that's that's how I see myself. And were you able to tie all of who you were becoming or became when you were raising your children? Were you specifically no. determined to raise them differently than you were raised? Well, I think every generation raises their kids differently, you know, but um, I don't think I was who I am. I don't think I was really the person I am now when I was raising my children. 
I, at all. You know, I think I was still operating under that guise of a woman is obliged to do this and this and that and that. And, you know, I, I don't think I even woke up, and I really would call it waking up, to, you know, what what possibilities exist, you know. I think we're always waking up to that. But I didn't I didn't wake up to that till, you know, I had four children and and I started thinking there's gotta be more to this, you know. <laughs> this can't be the whole thing, you know, there's gotta be more to this. And that's when I started really getting into metaphysics and studying uh, spirituality and just learning, you know, how what dreams meant and um just so many things. And that's when I started learning about you know, working with people and counseling, and you know, I did a, they, I did a number of things, starting organizations, working on board of directors and things like that. And I just, I just accrued a lot of experience, you know, during those times. And um, I think everything is so important. Every experience just broadens you so much. I'm just really grateful for all that. Again, you. You often hear people say how they are, they're in this job and they don't want to quit because they're making good money, yet they want to achieve something. Wow. And yeah. um, you make reference to that in your writings mm-hmm. and how you turned your childhood experience. It's a perfect example, I think. You created your own story. Yeah, yeah. I think we we all create our own story, even if we're cl- trying to clone um somebody else's you know we're still creating our own story and and what i encourage people to do is what i would call living their truth in other words what is it that that brings you joy and happiness what is it that that you find where you find peace and you know i was talking to someone the other day and and she was just like so disgruntled and i said you know when you're in your kayak on the lake are you disgruntled then? No, no, no. And I said, well, what do you feel then? And she and I knew the answer. And uh, and I said, well, how can you feel that all the time? What do you need to do or be? And I mean do or be. To feel that all the time because it's possible. You're creating your feelings. You're creating your emotions. You're creating your beliefs. You know, a belief is just something you've repeated over and over in your mind. I mean, you can cre- change your beliefs anytime you want. And that essentially was what I was trying to convince my mother of years ago, you know. At five years old. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, as I grew, I just I was got more more and more a force, you know, for her. But uh, you don't have to look at it that way, mom. You know. (laughs) But you know, it wasn't very welcomed (laughs) at that point. Well, yeah, especially in that era. You should be seen yeah. and not heard. So you yeah. find comfort in overcoming, ob- helping people overcoming obstacles, confronting life challenges, breaking through the boundaries, which I think yeah. is pretty I great. Love I love it. Actually, I love it because you can, wa- you know, when I work with someone, and normally they're in my office, I can watch them change. I can watch them lighten. And there have been people that come in and they're in pain and they actually leave and they're not in pain anymore. It's like... It's like something lifts, you know, and and you can watch it happen. And so it's very exciting to watch that. And uh, so anyway, yeah, it's it's a I consider it a huge blessing to me that I am doing the work that I do. Um, and I can't even imagine not doing it to tell you the truth, because it so resonates with who I am, you know. Yeah, Jean Walters, your mom, Helen. I thank you for sharing your story. So are you who you are today because of or in spite of your mother? I think she was an influence. I think she was a very powerful influence in my life. And I think I would not be as tough as I am if it hadn't been for her. Um, And I don't mean tough in a mean way. I mean, I just make up my mind and I'm going to do something and I go do it. That's the kind of toughness I'm talking about. And I just think it's so important that people tap into that kind of inner toughness so that they're just not caving in every time something goes wrong or they didn't manifest what they wanted when they thought it should happen, you know, and many people just give up. And I think it's such a shame because we're all, everybody is so creative, you know, and we have so much to offer. And um, and so that's, I want to encourage that. I want 
that's the, what the book is really about is like addressing the, the things that get in your way, addressing the stories you've been telling yourself, addressing the way you uh, affirm or deny yourself, you know, addressing and giving tools that they can use so they can immediately move from a panic attack or from um, when they're depressed. You know, there, there are things that people can do to move themselves out of that, but it requires uh, discipline, you know, and I don't think people understand discipline. That discipline is, is basically m managing your mind, you know, and there's only two, there's only two um, energies, love and fear. And when we place our attention on love, we're happy. And when we place our attention on fear, we diminish ourselves. So there's ways to bring ourselves back into a place of love and expansion. So there you know, is a way, sorry, to, there, there is a way for someone who, when you say learn that toughness, grab onto that toughness, there's a way for people to learn that skill, that absolutely. emotion. That's the, that's the good thing. Absolutely, totally, yeah. And, um, I mean, think about, there's so many people in our history that are, you know, they have, oh, Nelson Mandela, you know, 20, 25 years in prison, and but he completely transformed as a person while he was in prison. And then he became this incredible leader. Now, would he have been that great leader if he hadn't been in prison for 25 years? Who knows? I don't know that. Yeah. But, I mean, we see that all the time, and that's what I mean by toughness is that we we utilize this life that we're in and we utilize it to grow and and become more the person that we're designed to be and so when i say toughness i mean you don't let things take you down you let them build you back up again so if something doesn't go if you're fired from a job it could just as easily mean it's you're done with that job. It's time to go to the next one. It's time to expand to the next level now. Mm -hmm. Or it could mean like, oh, you're such a big failure and so forth. And people choose how they want to look at that. You see what I mean? That you Yeah, know, I've been fired from jobs and sometimes it was the best thing for me. And I've always been very lucky. And it, yes, you have to see right. it in the more positive right. light. I always tell people, congratulations, good, you're now ready for the next step, <laughs> because that's how I see it, you know, it's, it's, if you're done with that job, you either leave it or it leaves you. Motivate, inspire, and lead, my guest, yes. Jean Walters. Now, do you want me to give out your website? Uh, spiritualtransformation.com is my website. Love to have people visit. I've got all my books on there and um, all the information about the things that I do. But also I wanted to offer this, Jackie, and that anybody that uh, contacts me, you know, with just go to my email address, gene at spiritualtransformation.com. I will send them three chapters to the book. Oh, it's free. a great book. It's a great book. So your email, gene at spiritualtransformation.com, and yeah. your website is spiritualtransformation.com. Right. Jean Walters, thank you so much for joining oh, me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. So much great information, so many tools to use to improve our lives or to better ourselves. I'm Jackie Tantillo. You've been listening to Should Have Listened to My Mother. See you next week.